Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Movie Melee. We got an exciting match for you here today. We got two returning players who uh, had some unfortunate luck in round one of the tournament, but they're back here today to hopefully boost their record. We got Anthony Tisdall going up against Jordan Huffman. Should be a good match. I know both of these guys. They had good showings against very good competitors. Both ranked in the both uh, competitors that they faced in round one of the tournament were ranked in the top ten, and they both pushed them pretty far into round number three. So I think it should be an exciting one. Uh, we will get started with pre-match interviews, starting with one Jordan Huffman. Jordan, you are back from, I believe your last match was against one Matthew Chen, who ended up going all the oh, way yeah. to all the way to the semifinals of that tournament. Made it a long way. Uh, so you're back. Uh, thoughts on your match today against Anthony? I'm excited. Uh, I don't think I've ever had a match against Anthony of any kind. So should be new, should be fun. And, you know, that's why I'm always here for. Just have fun and hopefully do good. Yeah, that's all you can really hope for. Well, best of luck to you, sir. We will now bring in your opponent for this evening, uh, Mr. Anthony Tisdall. Anthony, you're back. Uh, you faced Tony Durso in round one of the tournament and very nearly beat him. You took him, I believe, all the way to the last question. Uh, so a very close match. Uh, thoughts on your opponent today, Jordan Huffman? I, I, I don't, yeah, I don't think we've ever played before. Uh, so I always look forward to playing somebody new. I've seen him. He seems like he's someone who's just here to have fun, which is usually what I'm here to do. I'm here to just show up, look like an asshole, and see what I know. So uh, let's go for it. Let's do this. All right. Sounds good. Then without any further ado, we will get started with round number one, which will work like this. It is the whiteboard round. Each player will get will be asked eight questions in eight different categories of movie trivia. If they get all eight questions correct, they will be asked a bonus question. And yes, each each question answered individually on the whiteboard. You know that. You've watched these videos before, I'm, certain, I'm sure. We don't have any new viewers. Anyways, uh, <laughs> we'll get started with your first question in round number one, which will come in the category of Westerns. Paul Newman and Robert Redford co-star in what Western? I guess I shouldn't say that. We have new viewers every day. Hello, new viewers. Hope you enjoy. Go five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. And we'll start with Anthony. Uh, Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. And Jordan? Yep. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. Yep. Both are correct. That's a long ass title to write. I know. I was like, ah. <sighs> so your next question will come in the category of actors and actresses. Kenneth Branagh, Ethan Hawke, and Laurence Olivier have all played what Shakespeare character? Not the biggest Shakespeare guy. I like some of his plays a lot, but you know, overall, not not actively searching out for new Shakespeare plays coming out. He's dead. I don't know why I said that. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We'll go to Jordan first. You catch that new Shakespeare? <laughs> uh, Hamlet. And uh, Anthony. Uh, Hamlet. Both correct. Two to two. As we get into your next category, which will be the 2010s, what kind of creatures are Adam and Eve in Only Lovers Left Alive? I don't want to give any hints about this movie, but I, I feel a certain type of way about it uh, and its director. I guess that's a very vague hint, but there you go. Five, four, I know someone three, that might be very upset with two, you about that statement. One. Pens down. We'll go to Anthony. Vampires? And Jordan? Nope. Vampires is correct. So Anthony takes the 3 to 2 lead there. So we get into your next question in the category of horror. What country is 199 sorry. What country is 1977's house set in? It's important that you get the year right there cuz there's a lot of movies called House, actually, yeah. in the horror genre. A lot of them are quite good, including this one. Five, yeah. four, three, two, That's a little enough. one. That's true. Pens down. We will go to Jordan first. I'm not sure, so I went to England. And Anthony? Japan. Japan is correct. Ah. So your next question will come in the category of comedy. How does Buddy end up at the North Pole in Elf? Now, 
Now this, this is a wonderful film that nope. I haven't seen since I was a kid. Nope. But <laughs> maybe it's good. I don't know. Five, four, three, two. Oh, uh, repeat the question. All right. That is Jordan's first repeat. Your question again. How does Buddy end up at the North Pole in Elf? Yes, I almost read the question underneath uh, that when he asked for a repeat. That could have been bad. Could have spoiled the future question. Glad I didn't do that. Uh, five, well, four, you three, Give me a two, one. Pens down, and we'll start with Anthony. Uh, he hid in Santa's sack. And Jordan? Yeah, uh, snuck in Santa's bag. Correct. Yep. Taken back by Santa in Santa's sack. So your next question will come in the category of drama. Who plays the titular character in The Talented Mr. Ripley? Haven't seen this movie, but I did read a lot of Ripley's Believe It or Not in school when I was in whatever grade. I can't remember. I was young. Five. Four. Yeah, well, those at the boardwalk. Two. Bye -bye. Yeah, right. Pens Get down. Uh, we'll go to George first. Matt Demon. And Anthony? What he said in that voice. Matt Damon is correct. All right, so six to four, I believe, is beginning to your next question in the category of the 1980s. What is Gecko doing when Bud first sees him in Wall Street? We need a semi-specific answer here. Yeah. Yeah, what a match so far. Good stuff. Oh, this is good. Almost. I don't almost, know what to say I, here. I was working away to a perfect game, but I don't know what you're doing. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. I will go to Anthony. That was fun while it lasted. Eating dinner. And Jordan? I know it's not right. Dancing. Uh, both incorrect. We're looking for giving a speech. Okay. So no perfect rounds today. Uh, we will get into your final question in round number one, which will come in the category of the 1990s. What 90s film is set at Cold Mountain Penitentiary? Yeah, I got nope. nothing for this one. That's real dumb. <laughs> I don't know if Anthony's talking to me. Or... I'm sorry, nope. I didn't write the question. Talking to myself. Five, talking to myself. four, three, two, one. Pens down. Pens down, Jordan. I will go to Jordan first. I'm not sure. I said Green Mile. And Anthony? I almost heard Charles Shank Redemption, then realized that Charles Shank's name of the prison. So I got nothing. Uh, the Green Mile is correct. Nice. So Jordan, uh, Jordan's the lead there. I believe it is six to five coming out of round number one in Anthony's favor. So we'll now get into round number two, which will work like this. It is the wheel round. So each competitor will get the chance to spin at the wheel, which will decide what category they will be answering questions in. Each question worth two points, unless they check down to multiple choice, in which case it will be worth one point. Stealing is available. The categories on the wheel today are Fast and Furious, 1990s, 1980s, recent releases, comic book movies, sports, directors, and Oscars, as well as spinners and opponents' choice. So with that, uh, Anthony, you are in the lead. Would you like to spin first or defer to Jordan? Uh, I'll let him go first. Okay, so then Jordan, this will be your first spin. This spin is brought to you by Berber. <laughs> <laughs> you land on the category of directors. Would you like to keep that or spin again? Uh, spin again, please. All right. So then the category that you will be saddled with today is the 1980s. All right. All right. So are you ready for your questions in the category of the 1980s? Sure. It's fair. You have to, it doesn't really matter. I'm going to ask them anyways, but yeah. <laughs> your first question. Who directed Coming to America? Oh. I feel like I should know this. Uh, I've been right. That is incorrect, uh, Anthony, for the two point steal. I was really hoping he went multiple choice. Um, 
who directed stuff back then? Uh, Eddie Murphy? That's also incorrect. We were looking for John Landis. No, oh, okay. And reminder, uh, multiple choices available in this round. So. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> My brain is tiny. It's all right. That's fair. <laughs> so your next question. <clears throat> Chariots of Fire centers around what sport? Um, running. Distance running. We can accept that, yeah, for two points. We had track and field, but we didn't say specifically, so it's fine. Uh, unless, Anthony, you looked like... No, I, I think running, it is running. All right, yeah. I think it was track okay. and field. That's 100% right. <laughs> yeah. Look, I don't do sports. Your next question. <laughs> Who plays Conrad Jarrett, a boy struggling with the death of his brother in Ordinary People? Ooh. Multiple choice, please. Your options are A, River Phoenix, B, John Henry, C, Ethan Hawke, or D, Timothy Hutton. Could you repeat those one time? <clears throat> Your options again, is it A, River Phoenix, B, John Henry, C, Ethan Hawke, or D, Timothy Hutton? I'll go with John Henry. Uh, that is incorrect. So, Anthony, for the one-point steal, is it A, River Phoenix, B, John Henry, C, Ethan Hawke, or D, Timothy Hutton? Let me guess. Timothy Hutton. That is correct for the one-point steal. <clears throat> so now your penultimate question in this category, Jordan. What South American country is romancing the stone set in? I think I need the points. Brazil? That is incorrect, Anthony, for the two point uh. steal. Chile? That is also incorrect. We're looking for Colombia. Ah, oh. oh, crap. So, so now your final question in this category. Oh, I got one more. Okay. Yeah. In what 80s film does a movie character named Tom Baxter exit his film and enter the real world? Uh, multiple choice, please. Okay. Your options are A, Who Framed Roger Rabbit, B, Last Action Hero, C, The Purple Rose of Cairo, or D, Tender Mercies? The Purple Rose of Cairo. That is correct for one point. So then I believe coming out of round number one, I have the score at Jordan in the lead eight to seven now. I was about to ask my co-host if that's what they have as well, but they're not here. So and we'll now bring it back the wheel. In my mind, be, that's what <laughs> For what will be Anthony's first spin. And it's a free respin. Land on comic book. Would you like to keep that or spin again? I think I got to keep it. There's too much on this wheel that I don't like. All right. Well, then <clears throat> I'll be reading your first question in the category of comic book movies once I can find it in the document here. There it is. Okay. Your question. Armando Yanucci directed what 2018 graphic novel film starring Steve Buscemi? Multiple choice. Right. Your options are A, Diary of a Teenage Girl, B, Budding Prospects, C, The Death of Stalin, or D, Nancy. Those are movies? Holy shit. Um, C. That is correct for one point. Literally never heard of any of them. It's nope. one of the weird <laughs> comic book movies. Yeah. God damn. Your next question. Dinah Lance is the real name of which Worlds of DC character? Uh, Black Canary. That is correct for two points. Thank you, I reversed. Your next question. Who voices Captain Haddock in The Adventures of Tintin? Damn. 
Five. Multiple Four. choice. Your options are A, Andy Circus, B, Bill Nighy, C, Daniel Craig, or D, Willem Dafoe. Oh, God, I said that. Um... Let's go B. B is incorrect. Uh, Jordan, for the one point steal, is it A, Andy Circus, B, Bill Nighy, C, Daniel Craig, or D, Willem Dafoe? Daniel Craig. That is also incorrect. We're looking for A, Andy Circus. Oh, okay. So your penultimate question in this category. In Big Hero 6, what is the name of the invention Hero contributes to the showcase, which is then stolen by the villain during the final fight or during the ah. fire? Oh, is this the right name? Nanobots? That is incorrect uh, for the two-point steal, uh, Jordan. Never seen it. No answer? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> okay. No guess. Uh, Anthony was very close. Uh, nanobots was actually one of the multiple choice options. We were looking for microbots, though. Oh, God damn it. Yes. So then your final question in this category. What is Eggsy's real first name in the Kingsman series? Oh, God damn it. Oh, I should know this. Five, four, multiple three. choice. Your options are A, Arthur, B, William, C, Gary, or D, Edward. None of those were anything in my mind. William? Uh, that is incorrect. Uh, Jordan, for the one-point steal, is it A, Arthur, B, William, C, Gary, or D, Edward? I'll go with Edward. That is also incorrect. We're looking for C, Gary. Yeah. Just know it wasn't Arthur. Wow, that was rough. All right, so with that, I have the score at 10 to 8, Anthony's favor coming out of round number two. So we'll now go into round number three, which works like blah, blah, which works like this. <laughs> Here's how it works. We'll be going back and forth drafting categories, starting with the player in the lead. Once a category is drafted, it cannot be drafted by your opponent. Once all categories are drafted, the player behind will answer questions until they take the lead. You'll choose which category and for which point value you would like to take first, and we will go until there is a mathematical winner. And the categories that they could choose from today are romance, 2000s, crime, family, 1980s, romantic comedies, drama, and biopics. So with that, we'll let them pick their categories right now, and we'll be right back. All right, we're back. The players have picked their categories. We'll now start with Jordan since he is down by two. Uh, Jordan, what uh, category would you like first and for what point value? Um, let's, do... let's do romance for one. All right. So your question in the category of romance. Leonardo DiCaprio and Kate Winslet co-star in what 2000s romance film? Five, four, three, two. I can't remember what it's four. called. That is incorrect. We were looking for Revolutionary Road. Yeah. yeah. All right, so then we'll stick with you. Uh, what category would you like and for what point value? <sighs> okay, let's do Fire Picks for two. All right. Question in the category of biopics. Who plays the titular character in 2008's Milk? Um, Sean Penn. That is correct for two points and the tie game. So now we'll go over to Anthony. Uh, what uh, category and for what point value? I'll do drama for one. All right. Your question. 
Who plays programming chief Diana Christensen in Network? This movie once in all the real film four, books are going to hate me. I don't know. Three, Civil Shepherd. Uh, that is incorrect. We were looking for Faye Dunaway. No, that makes sense. All right. So I believe we will now uh, stick with Anthony since he has more categories remaining, but we are tied. Uh, so what, uh, what category and for what point value would you like next? I'll try 80s for two. All right. Your question. Name two of the three actors who play the titular characters in Three Amigos. Oh, uh, Martin Short, Chevy Chase. That is correct for two points. So now going back to Jordan, you have your three and four pointer remaining in crime and romantic comedies. Which one would you like and for which point value next? Yeah, this is where it gets tricky. Um, I'll do crime for three. All right. Your question. In Logan Lucky, what specific requests do prisoners have that can't be satisfied leaving, that, or leaving them to riot? If you need me to repeat that, I can. Yes, please. All right. In Logan Lucky, what specific requests do prisoners have that can't be satisfied leaving them to riot? It's another one of those movies that I'm kicking myself for never seen. I'm going to say they Rock. want hot water. Uh, that is unfortunately incorrect. Uh, we are looking for the next Game of Thrones book. Sure. They'll yeah, be waiting a long fucking time for that one. <laughs> that's, that's tough. All right. So then here's the situation. I believe uh, Jordan has his four point question in the category of rom coms remaining. If he hits this, he will send it back over to Anthony. If he misses this, then Anthony will be the winner. Okay. So your question in the category of romantic comedies. What 60s romantic comedy is about a policeman who gets fired and falls in love with a, pr a Parisian prostitute who assumes a fake identity so she can only spend time with him? How many repeats do I have? I believe you have two remaining. Right. Five, four, three, two. Uh, let's uh, repeat that, please. All right. What 60s romantic comedy is about a policeman who gets fired and falls in love with a Parisian prostitute who assumes a fake identity so she can only spend time with him? Five, four, three, two. Repeat it again, one. please. All right. What 60s romantic comedy is about a policeman who gets fired and falls in love with a Parisian prostitute who assumes a fake identity so she can only spend time with him? No idea. So... I'm going to say we'll always have Paris. And your winner, Anthony Tisdall. Uh, unfortunately, we were looking for Billy Wilder's Irma La Douce. It's actually an okay film, uh, in my opinion, anyways. So we'll get into <laughs> post-match interviews now, starting with our unfortunate second-place finisher, uh, Jordan Huffman. Jordan, uh, you put up a solid fight. Uh, both players, I feel like, stumbled a little bit in round number two, but... It is what it is. Harder questions, I think, than you would expect from, you know, uh, a match that's like sub 500. So that was kind of on us, on the writers. My bad. Uh, but it is what it is. I think you still put up a really good game today. Uh, thoughts on the match overall? Um, I mean, I didn't play very well. Anthony definitely deserved to win that. He, he, he 
played better, knew more about those general categories than I did. Uh, the ones that I didn't know were mostly movies that I've never seen, so I don't really have an excuse there. Um, the only one I'm kicking myself over is Revolutionary Road. I, I should have known that. It was it was in the back of my head, and I just couldn't pull it. But I don't think that would have really made a difference. Um, so hats off to Anthony. Um, first time we played, and he got the victory. I'm still looking forward to coming back next time, hopefully doing a lot better. Yeah, that's fair. I believe this ends off uh, your season for 2023. But when you do come back next year, uh, is there anyone that you'd be willing to play or just anybody? Uh, anybody that's got a similar record to me. That's pretty much what I always say. Just anybody that's kind of in the same boat. As showrunners, we like that answer. It makes it easy for us. All right. No well, th thank you for coming out today. I will put you backstage for now. We'll bring in our uh, winner today, Anthony Tisdall. Anthony, Really solid performance. Uh, six in round number one, very, very solid. Like six right, right out the front. Like looked like you were almost going to get the perfect round there. Mm. Had a bit, a bit of stumbles toward the end, but you were able to get the victory. Thoughts on your performance overall? Yeah, round one I was happy with. Uh, six in a row. It was like, oh, am I going to get it perfect? And it just immediately dropped off the face of the earth uh, for a while. I'm a little, little unhappy with my comic book performance, but that first one was absurd. Never heard of that. Never saw Tintin and. I just messed up the Kingston question, but uh, now he he played well. Like he he got a 80s. I don't think that was really his uh, category, but he did well. He hit when he those those two last ones are tough, and I was glad I didn't have to try to hit a three or four in uh, 2000. His family would have been tough, but you know a win is nice. I uh, feel like I'm always right on the edge, right on the cusp in most of my matches. I always make it to like the final question and then lose. And uh, but hey, nice to get nice to get another check mark at the W column on this one. Yeah, that's fair. Well, with that, uh, I believe you get your record now to one below 500. Uh, I believe this is the end of your season uh, for Probably. 2023 as well. Uh, but when you return next season, again, who would you like to face or just well, anybody? I can't say Coho anymore because he doesn't play. And please, God, not Tony Durso again for the 8,000th time. I don't know. Uh, like Jacoby probably be fun or Aru. Uh, you know, I feel like they would be entertaining. I don't know where the records are, but, you know, I, I like them. I've hung out with them. I feel like playing them would be good. And I'll just have to start watching Wizard World shit for them. It's fine. Uh, no, no promises, obviously. Uh, obviously. I don't know about Rue, but uh, Jacoby actually sounds like it could happen. So be fun. Maybe. But, but we'll <laughs> put you backstage for now. Congrats. Uh, and I will end this off with my usual uh, awkward ass outro. Thank you all for watching. Uh, yeah. Thank you to the writers, showrunners, uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to find the end video here. See ya. Goodbye. <laughs> Storm in the castle. Take it away. Take it away. Bye. -bye.